all this week, we are marking 20 years since the Cedar Fire devastated San Diego County. Tonight, longtime CBS 8 anchor Barbara Lee Edwards shares her memories of the firestorm. She'd been here as main anchor for about two years at the time and got the call early on a Sunday morning to come into work, leaving her husband, young daughter, and two-month-old son at home to drive into work through ash gray skies. Barbara Lee spent nearly 10 hours in this studio that first day, bringing vital news to San Diegans. This is Local 8 News at 6. Good evening and welcome to Local 8 News at 6 o'clock as you join us for our continuing coverage of San Diego on fire. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. This situation. It's been 20 years. Yes. What are your memories from the first day of the fires? The first day of the fire I remember really vividly. These are pictures from the Scripps Ranch area where at least 150 homes have been destroyed. You have this sense of my God, this is awful. We need to cover this. We need to let people know. We need to warn people. You are in danger. You need to leave the area immediately. We need to tell them what they need to do. We need to help. And when we started getting information that were, there were fatalities. Alex, nine deaths are being blamed directly on the fires. Uh, it was devastating for everybody, and I, I couldn't even imagine what it was like for those families. You just did your best to keep carrying on with the job, the task at hand, because but it was just such a vital service. People needed that information. That includes Kaiser. They have phoned us to say that they do want their employees to come in to work tomorrow. We're going to go down to Carla Chiquetto now. Let's stop and just react to this for a moment. Well, this was some new guy, and we kept having trouble with his name. <laughs> I may have called him Geppetto at one point. So we're going to head down to Otay Lakes now. Carlo Cacheno has the latest on the situation down there. Carlos? Yeah, Otay Lake is... Uh, uh, I got to know him a little bit, though, over the years, though. So now I know that that is our Carlo Chiquetto, who, by the way, had been in here for a matter of weeks when he was thrown out there to do this fire coverage. I, like I'm saying, it was a learning experience for everyone. It was all hands on deck and everybody did an amazing job. And of course, Jeff Zevely, solid as ever. If you live in this area, your stuff is safe tonight. What was your main goal? To tie it all together. I think even though the wind has died down right. and people are not allowed in back at their homes. You know, a lot of people were emailing and saying things like um, for animals that need to be evacuated <coughs> that you can bring them here but then if anyone else hears about this if you have food or anything that you can bring we need more help in this area so as we're covering the fire we're also doing these incredibly important public service announcements you just really felt the sense of how important it was that you were there for them the program but right now we're going to go to one of the biggest and first evacuation centers set up today and that was at Qualcomm Stadium our best shelter we actually stopped going to commercial break after a while. Barbara Lee, we just knew this was going to have to be wall-to-wall -wall coverage. There was nothing, simply nothing more important than the information we were bringing people at that time. And because there was a lack of social media, you really wanted to get graphics up on the screen. Nearly 600 homes have been destroyed. And keep reminding people this is what's happening. We couldn't refer them to anything. We had to be that source of information. It was a completely different time as far as technology is concerned. And we also had to go over to the radio station and they would pick up our signal because it's not like somebody could take take their iPhone with them and then start streaming it once they got in the car. So we wanted to get the message out any way we possibly could. If you think about these people having to leave spur of the moment, but they don't know where to go, once they're in their car, how are they going to know where to go? So they started picking up our broadcast signal on radio as well. And to see the images we're looking at now, watching homes burn down in real time. Scripps Ranch has been so hard hit today, Heather. How did you internalize that? It was a whole mix of emotions because a lot of people that were seeing their homes burn down really emphasized they're just glad everyone got out safely. But if you waited a second, you could see it was a little more than that when they turned back toward the devastation and you realize that everything is lost. I'm devastated. I mean, Every emotional, valuable memento, baby pictures. A lot of people lost things that simply couldn't be replaced. It took a while for the community to heal and recover. It was just a big scar across the landscape and it really drove home what a horrible beast fire is. Now many of you may be wondering how you can help. We started the phone banks the next day. Everyone wanted to help. It's the one positive thing that can come out of something so devastating as the incredible sense of community in San Diego County. It's just amazing. Anything else you want to reflect on? Well, for me, I can honestly say that sort of set 
the tone for the rest of my career. Wildfires still burning out of control from Escondido to Alpine. I was sitting on the desk for the majority of the day with Wendell. the late great Michael Tuck, Tuck who was Thank the consummate professional CBS and TV so good at covering yeah, breaking yeah, news yeah, that I actually yeah. felt a sense of calm covering this crazy breaking tragedy with him because he was so in control. And that is our news for now. We thank you very much. For and I would us. like to think that after that day, I was able to take a bit of that with me tonight in stories and events that I covered in future years. It was so good to see Barbara Lee. She says that was actually the first time she covered a wildfire like that. She was running on adrenaline despite being super tired with a newborn at home and her son Brady is now 20. Many of you know she spent nearly 20 years here with us until she retired last year after suffering a brain bleed and a lot of you have asked about her. She wants everyone to know that she takes life more slowly these days but she is doing well. Just really wonderful to see her. She was such a comforting voice on there mm -hmm. along with, with Michael. Just amazing. It's great to see her. Uh, I, I was new only three yes. weeks but you have kind of a unique perspective. You weren't here yet but you came to San Diego a short time after these devastating fires. About four weeks later I came in for my interview and our news director at the time drove me through Scripps Ranch because he was trying to explain just how devastated it was and I remember thinking wow this looks like a war zone yeah. and just feeling and then of course got hired and it was it took years months for us to do those stories on people rebuilding and people were left in evacuation centers for weeks because pe so many people just had nothing and that's what Barbara Lee was stressing it wasn't a one or two day event no. it was it was weeks and months 28 100 structures, about 2,000, 2,200 of those were homes. So much lost, so much memories, so much property, just a devastating time. Yeah, and so nice that our, our coverage this week is, is are highlighting some of the, the, the positives that have come out mm -hmm. of it.